right there are your black and gray tanks. I'll get back to those in a moment. Once it is built, they put it inside what I affectionately call the hurricane chamber. The next thing you see is a Dexter axle. This is a crossbar axle representation of what it actually looks like. Why are you tearing apart our cabinets, Blair? These have seen their better days. <laughs> Water is coming out of my drain tube for the air condition. And there are two here, so I'm going to blow air up through them. If you notice water pooling on the ground in either one of those spots, that could be your issue. I've been testing out something for the last month or so. Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to give away a prize. Stay tuned to the end to find out what it is. Blair and I went to the Airstream of Tampa dealership not long ago. And when you walk into the showroom, it's a really cool display they have there. It's a Airstream frame and a, and a top, but the whole roof is removed off of it. And I want to just talk about a few things. I made some videos, so I'm going to put that up on the screen here. And uh, then I'm going to go through some of the factory tour things uh, that you can go to if you ever find yourself near Jackson Center. So up on my screen here, you can see the, the rear of the Airstream, the, the flooring is actually cut out so you can see the frames. And then right there are your black and gray tanks. I'll get back to those in a moment. Um, and you can see the white tanks there are your freshwater tanks. And then the hose going down underneath. That's a shot of your tank sensor. So sometimes they fall off, uh, come unglued from the side of the tank, basically, and they're no longer able to sense how much water is in it. So... And if you notice, it's not quite to the top and it's not quite to the bottom. So therefore, your zero is not actually zero and your 100 is not actually 100. It's not far off, but it's, it's just not exactly where it needs to be. Then you see the hose duct work going down into that frame area surrounding your tanks. When you run your furnace, the, the air is pumped down through here to warm underneath your flooring. And that heat keeps your tanks from freezing. That's one of the things about Airstreams. And that's only true on models except for base camps and classics. They both have tank heaters installed. Next is your the framework. Upper right of center is a hole in the floor. That's where your spare tire would go, right there in that section of the frame. And then you can see the A-frame coming in from your right-hand side going back to meet that uh, main crossbar there. And this just reminded me of the factory tour. You can watch the video here that I'm about to show on Airstream on YouTube. You can watch it on their website. But this is a really good video factory tour of the new factory. They, re they built this in 2020, I think it was, or 2021. And they opened it up so you can, you can actually go take a tour of it. We haven't done so yet. Uh, but it's really neat to see how they produce them and they walk you through from building the side panels to the roof panels and then putting all those things together and how they do the buck riveting and how they align up all the parts and all that kind of stuff. It's really cool when they work as a team, one person on the inside, one person on the outside and they do all the buck rivets and you see them putting them in there one at a time. But it's a really neat process. They build this, the, both end caps, the roof, the side walls and the frame as a flooring all in six different pieces. And then they put them all together and uh, make one complete Airstream. Just a frame coming in the shop here. You see them putting on the axles here. And they put in all the tanks and they put in the insulation and they cover the bottom of the floor and put the step on. And then they flip it upside down. And there's your frame that your rest of your trailer is going to go on to once it gets there. And there's the reflectix insulation that's underneath your flooring um, and then here's a big completed airstream frame going over on the crane to get put on top of that flooring and then they put the they call it banana the banana trim underneath that that rounded black trim that goes underneath the airstream to the bottom but it's a pretty cool process once you see how this thing is actually built. Once it is built, they put it inside what I affectionately call the hurricane chamber and they spray all this water on it and wind on it. And they've got somebody inside checking every seam to verify that there are no leaks. And if you notice, there's only an outs outside skin or exterior skin and there's um, frame. There's nothing on the interior side. 
only after this leak check do they bring it back inside, dry it off, and then they begin to put in your interior insulation and interior skin. And if you didn't know, every piece of furniture is built there with furniture grade, high quality furniture grade wood, and everything has to fit inside that door. So they're hand assembled on the inside and they push all the furniture in and they assemble it inside the, the trailer, unlike many other trailers where they assemble them from the inside out. The next thing you see is a Dexter axle. This is a crossbar representation of what it actually looks like. And Dexter has a wonderful video to show you how this system works. So check it out. With Dexter's Torflex rubber torsion suspension axles, you'll have no concerns. Torflex's unique independent axle suspension means a smoother ride for your trailer and greater peace of mind for you. Dexter's Torflex suspension system is a torsion arm type of suspension that's self-contained within the axle tube. It attaches directly to the trailer frame, adding strength as a load-carrying cross member. The Torflex axle provides improved suspension characteristics over leaf spring axles. Hello Adventures, Russ here. In today's video, we're going to do some repairs and modifications of the Airstream. As you can see, we have a broken rivet. We're going to fix that and show you how it's done. But in the other guy's video that we saw, I forget the guy's name. I think it was Bo or... Linda, what was his name? I think it's Bart. Yeah, I think Bart from some kind of 13 event, something like that. I'm not sure what else. But he showed us using safety glasses and stressed using safety glasses. Well, I think they're overrated. So what I plan on doing is just close my eyes and kind of figure out where to drill. And that way it saves time and also money. So stay tuned and we'll show you the end result. Why are you tearing apart our cabinets, Blair? We're going to try it another. These have seen their better days. <laughs> so what did you do initially? These are from our first trailer. Yep. These are, this is um like peel and stick wallpaper, but it sticks on the side that I didn't want it to stick on, so I just taped them up there. Which worked out pretty well for the first few years. Yep. They just got wrinkled the last time I moved them from the first trailer to this trailer, so. So you found some double-sided, <clears throat> what is it, window film? Uh, I have to look at it. I don't know the terminology. Good. It looks real good. How's it look? Looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good. It's bright white. Sold. So how do you think the job went today? As you can see, after a quick trip to the emergency room to get some metal shavings taken out of my eye, everything is A-OK. -okay. So next on, we're gonna go over one of the modifications of the Airstream. All right, everybody, you can see, maybe in the video, water is coming out of my drain tube for the air condition. And there are two here, so I'm going to blow air up through them because I think I got one of them kind of stopped up. Maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's something. So now I just want to go see if I got any water up on the roof. I can't see up there, but maybe my camera can. A few weeks back, I was working on putting that insulation up in the 
air conditioner returns and I noticed particularly on this front one that the line had some kind of mold looking in it and a little bit of water built up so I don't know that that one runs I think there's a sag in it which causes some water to back up on occasion and it comes on this roof so my front air conditioner will, water will run down the side here uh, right at the front on occasion so we'll see if that does any different since I blew out the water lines, I've had no more water coming off the front here or the back. And uh, I think there was some debris in, in the front one particularly. This was causing the water to back up in there and flow over the side onto the roof and down the side of the rig. Not that big a deal and it only happened on occasion. And it's more, it was more prevalent when I was not exactly level. So uh, not that big a deal. If you notice water on the ground, particularly right up here where your awning rod comes down, and on the back where your awning rod comes down. If you notice water pooling on the ground in either one of those spots, that could be your issue. But also note, if you have water pooling on the ground, please trace it back and figure out where it's coming from. If you can see it, typically if it's coming off the roof, it's gonna come right down this seam right here because that's where your gutter ends right up at the top up there and it'll run down and drip on the ground right here. But if it's not there and it's notice, you notice it like up front, coming out from under your rock guard or underneath anywhere coming out of the belly pan. Odds are it's, it's doing something weird, so you need to investigate where that water exactly is coming from to make sure that it's not leaking somewhere else. So you can see my, my drip patterns there. One's these two different drip patterns. I can tell that it's coming out properly. Hi, adventurers. We're back again, and now we're going to go over one of the modifications I did with the Airstream. But unlike the other guy's video that he most recently put out about boondocking, and he went over how the solar sun does this, and he had all these fancy schematics, and how this works and that works, and how many batteries you need. I don't need that. What I did was a much easier and cheaper way to go. So without any further ado, here it comes. Cold fusion. That's right. I put a cold fusion reactor under my bed. And that powers, as you can see with my fancy diagram here, it goes right to the converter, which powers the whole airstream and also goes and charges up the front to my batteries. So it's short and simple. But unlike the other guy who has this fancy display on his, on his wall so he can check what output of this, I don't need that. All I do is I keep an eye on the LED lights. And if they stop blowing or popping, I know I got to go check the fusion reactor. So what do you think, people? This is great, and I'll share the technology with you. Hey friends, uh, real quick, I've been testing out something for the last month or so, and I'm gonna do a detailed review on it very soon, but I just wanna give you a sneak preview. Right here is a triple filter, and right there is a water softener from Blue Tech. Uh, these are, you can get these on the Air Gear website, but so far it's been an awesome upgrade. Very spendy, but an awesome upgrade nonetheless. If you're interested in water filtration and all that kind of good stuff, keeping your rig clean and nice and clean with the water system, and I'll do a full review on what I think of these things coming up in a video very soon, so stay tuned for that. All right, the prize this week is a really cool device, particularly for those of you who have a weight distribution hitch. This is from Equalizer. It's called the On Target Device, and it is basically a laser pointer is what it does, but you can set it up where you can check your vehicle. You uh, laser from the front axle down to the ground, laser from the back axle down to the ground with no weight on the truck, and then you add your weight from the trailer. Then you put your weight distribution bars on, level the truck out some, and do it again. It'll tell you exactly percentage-wise how much load you've taken off uh, the back of the truck and put onto the weight distribution bar. So it's a really handy device. A couple of things that I like to use it for is a laser pointer because I can put it against myself and measure across a campsite. I can measure the depth of a campsite and things like that to make sure that we can fit. All you have to do to win it is go to our website, click on the contact us link at the top of the screen, scroll down, put in your name, type in your email address, and then type in on target giveaway. And 72 hours later, after this video releases, we will announce a winner on YouTube and all of our social media channels. So if you'd like the chance to win this on target measuring device, all you have to do is enter. I also want to say thank you to Russ and Linda for the awesome and funny videos that you made. 
Uh, we very much appreciate your friendship and, and love you guys and can't wait to see you on the road again. If any of you others want to make fun of me out there with some videos, please do. I'll put you in one of ours. Thanks to everyone out there for making us a part of your adventure. As always, we are very grateful for you and we love this community. Have an awesome day, everyone, and happy adventures. <laughs>